What's up friends? Happy New Year. I'm making this video because one of my private clients reached out to me on Messenger. She was just sharing what she's moving through, you know, some New Year's stuff. Um, really beautiful, really vulnerable shares. And this is the power of that aspect, right, of support is when you can just reach out on Messenger. But she shared this with me in Messenger. She says, I don't know why I'm sharing this with you, but I guess you know, what you shared in your five year, like look back, you know, I shared earlier on Facebook and Instagram. I don't know if you saw it five years ago today, I had a moment that changed my life forever. I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't really asking for it the way that it happened. It was kind of shocking, a little bit startling and really I wasn't ready for it. But what happened to me when I share that sometimes people, a lot of my clients people at events will say well I want that to happen to me what do you think like how can I get God to talk to me <laughs> kind of thing so I just want to talk about a few things about this and this is for anyone who is maybe developing your spiritual practice this could be someone who is wondering what's the point of my life what's the bigger picture here how can I really live my most epic fulfilled joy-filled life if you're one of those people this message is for you so the first thing I want everyone to be clear on is that you are born with unique codes that make you special and one of one. What really helped me with this, because I thought my life was worthless for most of my life, and I was treated like I was worthless in a lot of ways, and you know, I had a lot of emotional pain, a lot of demons I felt like I was battling. I struggled with addiction. I struggled with abuse. Everywhere I looked in my family, I saw people struggling with the same things. I mean, I just didn't see a way out of it. So when I found my spiritual practice, I was doing it just because I was trying to navigate a diagnosis, which was like a panic disorder, anxiety. Um, I never thought that it was going to bring me my life's purpose or anything like that. But what I found in the process is it absolutely does. As we're moving through life, we pick up on everything, right? And this is why now I am so mindful of the rooms I'm in, the conversations I'm having with people. I'm so mindful of the kinds of coaches I will hire, the kinds of books I will read, the things I watch on TV. Um, all of it matters. All of it matters. So going back to this time, um, five years ago when I had this, I was not expecting any sort of voice or guidance. I wasn't waiting on it to happen. I think if you're waiting on it to happen, it's not going to happen. What I was doing and the power in this, this is why I'm bringing this into all the things that I'm doing this year, uh, is that I was in a group. I was in a group meditating for four days. When you're in a group and you're meditating for four days, and you are being intentional and you are asking big questions, you will get big answers. Whether it's in the form of a aha moment, whether it's in the form of a crystal clear feeling, knowing that something needs to change. When I went to my first meditation retreat, which was not when I had my awakening, you know, that moment where I heard what I heard. I went to my first meditation retreat and I thought it was weird as hell. I didn't know it was even silent. I thought it was a yoga meditation retreat and that I was going to be able to eat raw food and meditate some and do some yoga. And it was my 30th birthday. I'm 37 now. I went to that and that was at like the peak of my illness. And if you look back at the photos when I share them occasionally, I was so skinny. I think I was under 100 pounds and I was really sick. I felt like I was 70 years old and I was just turning 30. So I went to this meditation retreat thinking, I need to do something and I'm not gonna to go to Vegas. I'm too sick to do the things I normally do on my birthday, which is get fucked up. So let me do something else. So I booked this weekend and I get to the retreat center and it says, in loving silence and I was like what silence we're gonna be silent for a weekend and let me tell you I had a panic attack that night I actually jumped in the bed with my girlfriend uh, Andrea you all know her as Emma Cole I jumped in the bed with her because I had a freaking panic attack from being in silence I was not comfortable with it and that was because at that time I was so used to filling myself up with noise 
leaving the TV on while I slept, um, filling myself up with conversations. If I was in the car for too long, I would call someone. I didn't like to be alone on the weekends. I was constantly filling my time with other people, information, noise. Does that sound familiar? Have you, have you ever felt that? Where you're in the car and you feel like you need to call someone? Have you ever been... Um, you know, in the space where you feel like you just need to fill your time up with something, maybe you're on a flight, you just have to go and do something. When you're doing that, you are distracting yourself from your inner guidance. Just know that. And as long as you know that, then you are getting a little bit further here. <laughs> and I see Allie. Hi, Allie. Happy New Year. I see Allie gave a, a few likes there. So she probably was feeling it all the time. Okay. So whenever we're doing that, we're keeping ourselves distracted from what our soul wants us to hear. So here's a, a little tidbit that transformed my life going to these retreats and, and doing the trainings and things that I've done is that the universe, God, higher self, your intuition, it is communicating with you 24 seven all the time, all the time. Now here's the thing that you may not be okay with. And this is where most humans, you know, there's a buffer between you and spirit and it's all of your patterning it's all the noise it's the conversation you had last it's the thing that's pissing you off right now it's the last movie you watch um, it's the things that have been under your skin that you haven't given yourself time to really be with there's a buffer between you and spirit and some people be like there's no buffer between you and spirit no there is because you have to sit down and allow yourself to refine your listening and go beyond everything that you have been listening to, the noise, the emotional debris. When clients come to me because they want to, you know, be more creative in their business or they want to heal a relationship or maybe they have an addiction that they haven't been comfortable with or maybe they have some trauma in their family. People come to me for all sorts of reasons, not just business. No matter what they come to me for, what we're doing is refining their listening. And for most people, they are so caught up in the voice of someone else, in the noise of society. And maybe you still hear the harshness of your mother. Maybe you still hear the, um, you know, the unworthiness that you picked up from your father. Whatever it is, you have to be able to sift through that, navigate that before you are going to hear spirit talking to you. So here, let's go back to this idea that your higher self is talking to you 20 Four, seven. So spirit is talking to you, communicating to you, not like a, a thing in your ear, but there's communication, there's hints and signals. It's happening 24 seven. Once I knew that I was like, okay, the answers are here. I have to begin listening. Right. And when I started doing that, I would see that there were hints and signals everywhere. But in the beginning, let me turn this light back on. Oh no. I came to get vegetables and then I got my client reached out to me and when she reached out to me, hold on, there we go. When she reached out to me, I was like, I'm making a Facebook live on this. This is a great topic. So going back to what I was saying, this is available to you 24 seven. However, you may not have the discipline. You may not have the tools to actually access it, to access it. So what I do with my clients and what I did with myself and what I learned from my teachers along the way is learning these new access points, right? And it's not fun. It's not fun. Like it's it's like okay, some of it feels sexy like the women that are coming to Bali with me next month. That seems fun. You guys may not know this. I'm going to India in 16 days, 17 days. I I'm going to Bali to do work. This year I went on 11 day training for meditation in Bali. I threw up twice. I cried so much that I like felt like this was not good for my body and my teacher this is what he said to me. You think this is anything? This is nothing yet. <laughs> Like it's healing and awakening is not what we think it is. So for a lot of people, they think, well, I don't feel great right now. Why don't I feel great? Know this, that if you're asking for a new life, if you are asking for a radical change, which most of you are, you're asking for your bank account to look different. You're asking for your home to look different. You're asking for your environment, like your your friends, your circle. You're asking for upgrades. Am I right? Is there anyone on here that's not asking for upgrades in those places? Please let me know. Now, for those of you that are asking for upgrades in 2020 and beyond, get clear on that and know that it's going to take a lot of 
letting go. That means that the most of the friends that are around you right now, the way that you've been living, the things that are your normal must shift. They must change. That's not fun. What we think that we're going to do when we have um, our awakening and really step into our purpose, we think we're going to keep all these things because that would be comfortable. And then we're just going to add some new stuff. Why not? We're just going to add some new stuff on top of everything that's already here. No, it doesn't happen like that. It does not happen like that. So to me, when I look out on why do some of my clients have really radical results and then they keep going in quantum leap and why do some not? It's the ones that are like, you know what? I am really, I'm going to surrender. I'm going to let go of everything I need to let go of. And I understand that in this letting go, I'm going to feel uncomfortable because guess what? We are humans and we want our blankies. Blankies come in the form of outdated relationships. They're good, but they're not phenomenal. Um, Blankies come in the form of the job that has the benefits. It's paying the bills, but you're not balling out yet. (laughs) <laughs> right there is blanky in the form of trying to stay in the like comfortable apartment because you want to save some money but you don't recognize that every time you try to stay small to save money at your current income level you're actually blocking your blessings you're blocking your abundance you can't open up and expand because you're still choosing from a state of current per- paradigm when you're upgrading and quantum leaping you're trying to say I'm ready to totally pull myself up out of this paradigm. A paradigm is like the box you're living in. It's all of the beliefs. It's what you believe as real for you. If you and I sit down side by side and we talk about what we think life is right now, what we think is available to us right now, how easy it is to make money, how hard it is to make money, how easy it is to meet new friends, how hard it is to make new friends, we're going to have different beliefs about that. Because even though we share the same oxygen and we live on the same planet and we're a part of the one, we are living in, in fact, different paradigms. Now, when we get together in groups of people and we surrender to this deep work, have you ever been to an in-person thing like a convention? How many of you have actually invested in any sort of convention, conference, retreat, group coaching program that has been in person? Anybody in here? Have you guys ever been to one? If you have, say yes, drop an emoji, something. Allie has been to one. Have any of you other friends out here been to a live event where you're actually with people? Not a digital course, not an online coaching program. Okay, only one of you? Okay, Charlene. So here's the deal. Arissa says, yes, they're so transformational. Yes. So here's the thing I want you to know. In person, Christy says yes. Hi, Christy. Happy New Year. Chris says yes. Hi, Chris. Happy New Year. So these events, the reason why you felt such a big transformation, some of the things that you probably heard there are not even like the first time you heard it. How many of you have been to these events and heard things that you've already heard before? Me. (laughs) Right? Right? So why is it so transformational? Because the collective yes It infuses us. I can feel chills in my legs as I'm saying this. There's collective energy that happens and it is a vortex. Now, vortex is not some just made up shit that Abraham Hicks started putting in books. It's real. It's scientific. It happens. Jessica says yes too. So when we get together and it's in person, people have dramatic shifts in a short amount of time because collectively we're giving a big yes. And We're asking big questions. We're willing to see it. We are in a new space. Not only that, not only the collective energy, we also are out of our environment. That means that when we look around, we are in fresh blank canvas. Our brain is in a different space. Our senses are in a different space. We are able to pick up and create a new identity faster because we're outside of our normal box, our normal paradigm. So in that space, we pick up on, oh my gosh, I'm not who I thought I was. Oh my gosh, I can be somebody else. Because really, we're identity makers. We are meaning makers, but more than that, we are identity makers. But when all we see is what we know everywhere we go, we cannot get out of our paradigm because we're stuck in it, right? So because of this, and I saw what happened at my last Bali retreat, like literally at my last Bali retreat, one of the women is engaged now. Um, The other one 
left the relationship that she'd been talking about leaving for years. Um, other ladies have done so many beautiful things, stepped into their purpose, like beautiful downloads were coming. And I saw it and I was like, there's something that happens at the live events that I have and that I've been to, other people have, that just does not happen in these online coaching groups. And when I talk about this awakening that I had, it's because I feel I was asking big questions at live events and I was continuously, not just at the big events, I was obsessed with getting the answers. I wasn't obsessed like, it better come today. Where is it? I was just like in a deep surrender. I know what surrender is. And I was thinking like this, if other people have radically transformed their lives and there's people that have gone from welfare to multimillionaire, if other people have healed their bodies, if other people have left toxic relationships and have gone on to be in these beautiful partnerships, if people can go from having friends that they just do drugs and alcohol with to friends that they're changing lives with, me too. Why not me, <laughs> right? Now, this is very basic, but I share this with you because I want you to have this too. But the thing that I did that a lot of people won't do is that I took massive risk, like literally would take all my money and spend it on that thing because my soul said, this is for you. I did things that logically made zero sense. I believe early on that I thought like miracles are not logical. I'm asking for miracles. Why am I going to try to like make sense of this? If I feel a pull that something is for me, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to trust in divine intervention, which is technically what a miracle is. And let this happen. So because of that, I feel like that's why I heard what I heard. Because I had made myself available and ready for my purpose. Now, some of you are like, I'm available and ready for my purpose. But meanwhile, you get drunk every night or something. Or, you know, not maybe drunk every night. But you can't stop drinking wine for a couple days. You're not willing to get off of social media for a weekend. You are not willing to let go of that friend that every time they ask you to go out, all you guys do is talk about negative things. Or talk about how everything is expensive. So... What I want to invite you to do is get really clear on how important it is for you to wake up. And awakening is just waking up to more of who you really are. It's waking up to more of what's really here for you. You may think that there's not another job or a, another, you know, partner or that there's not money or that it's hard to make money. Or like, I remember before I thought it was so like, holy shit, if I made $10,000 a month. And now if I only made $10,000 a month, I would feel poor. <laughs> and I don't say that to, to, you know, offend anyone. It's just that my bills are different. The investments in my business and my life are different. And I, I want to tell you that because anything that you want, anything that you're consistently choosing it is going to shift things for you. Hi, Joni. Happy New Year. You should watch this from the beginning because it's been really powerful <laughs> and there's a lot of good tips in here. So what I want you to know is that it's all here for you. But if you're going to make other things more important than your awakening, it's not going to happen. And by other things, there's things that you're going to have to face to open up to your true power and potential that a lot of people aren't willing to do. Isolation people aren't willing to be alone. They're not willing to be alone. They're not willing to, they're not willing to have time alone. They're not willing to lose some people for temporary. Nothing that's taken will not be replaced. Everything that's taken. I mean, this is like scientific that wherever one thing is moved, the space is filled up. That's science. So if you're willing to be in the middle in between and to allow the unknown to be a place of comfort, and that's things that happen when you start building up spiritual stamina, your life will change. That means when you're letting go of one thing that's not working, you trust, you let it fall away. You're like, oh, this person is not calling me as much or something's weird. My closest friends, we don't vibe together the same. Oh my God, maybe I should just try to like be like them again. Maybe I should try doing this again. Maybe I should you know, wanna make myself different. That's you trying to contract. Like you're you're trying to go back to what you were. You're trying to you're trying to backtrack. And when you do that, you shrink. And when you shrink, you're not making yourself available to your highest and best. Period. So what you have to be okay with, and this is again spiritual stamina, is being okay with those times where life is pulling something away from you and know that life is bringing something else your way. 
You have to be okay with those times where that money is going to leave your bank account because you're going to make some investments or you're going to quit a job and maybe you're going to do something that maybe gives you less money, but it's going to bring you more joy, purpose, and make more space for grace in your life. You have to be okay with letting go and trusting that whatever leaves, there's always that space is always filled up, right? So this is my invitation to all of you. For any of you that this is speaking to you, some of you were walking around with a story that you can't afford to have certain kind of coaching in your life. Some of you are walking around with a story that you don't have time for a program. Some of you are walking around with a story that you don't have the money for it. It's not true. It's not true. That's, that's a story. The way that I share how I manifested $36,000 and moved into my dream apartment because I needed a procedure, a, a procedure I needed my whole life that ever since I was eight years old, there's something that I wanted to have done and it cost 36000 It kept going up every few years how much it cost, but I never could come up with the money and I didn't have the credit for it. I No one would bring me to like bring me that money. It was just, it was crazy. I was like, how could I come up with $36,000? And then it finally hit me that the reason I didn't have it and that I couldn't come up with it was because I didn't believe I was worthy of it. And that was painful because doesn't it suck to recognize that you've been saying no to yourself and you've been blocking yourself from something that would make you feel better? So that sucked to admit that to myself. I actually cried about it in an ayahuasca um, ceremony for like an hour. And I was like, wow. I don't have this, not because it's not possible, but because I don't believe I'm worthy of it. My whole life, I've been told it's not important. My family won't give me the money for it. They don't have it, but they could have co-signed or something. And I just don't have it because I don't believe I'm worthy. Once I came to to that, and that's for so many women, so many of you will spend $10,000 on a car, but you won't spend it on a program. You will spend $10,000 on your kid's college, but you won't spend it for you to get free. It's bullshit. So I know because I bought into that bullshit too. So let's talk about this for a second. Deciding like, wow, the only reason I don't have fill in the blank is because I don't feel worthy of it. Then you start coming into that like clarity. You start opening up to what do I need to do to have this money, to give myself this? Because everything in life you give to yourself you can get something from someone else. It won't feel as juicy. It won't feel as good. I could have had people buy me that if I really wanted. It could have came through those ways. I felt like such a boss bitch going into my doctor and saying, here's $36,000 check, no credit, that I just created this money last month. It felt so good. (laughs) And I know that it had to happen that way so that I could tell other women. And for me, it was, you know, it was a dental procedure. And for me, it changed my life. It made me feel so different. It changed the way that I could eat. It was everything for me. And not only that, I get to do so many other things. But for me, that was a big mountain that was in my life ever since I was like eight years old. Like it was like, it was a drama for my whole life. So there's something for you that you need in your life and that you want to free yourself of, but you keep telling yourself you can't afford it or you don't have the time. And because in your paradigm, it's impossible, you keep yourself in a very small box, in a very small limited space. So I'm going to share this because then I have to go, go get these vegetables before the store closes because it's New Year's Day, is that some of you ladies have been talking about doing coaching with me some of you ladies have been eyeing up the miracle academy you know that what we're talking about with this in-person work why do you think i created a very intimate container for only 10 women to come together to be coached by me but to also dive deep in weekend retreats two weekend retreats i don't care what you have going on in your life everyone has time to make space for two weekends I'm going to India and then Bali and doing all these things. My dad hasn't even 100% confirmed he's watching my daughter. But guess what? I invested in the $25,000 program. I said yes to these things because guess what? If not, I'll just hire someone. Something will figure out. I will do something. I'm not worried about it. Life supports my yes. The other thing I think about is this. What would my life be if I didn't say yes to these things? If I just kept saying later? It would be boring. I would not be the woman I am today. Some of you are putting off things thinking that you need to have something happen next year. You're thinking, oh, I'll maybe in 2020. Well, guess what? 2020 is here. 
You're going to wait until 2021 now? Like, this is your life. This is your time. Start saying yes and understand that the things are more available to you than you think they are. And when you get into that space, magic happens. For some of you, it's just reaching out to me and finding out the pricing and talking about the payment plans and making it happen. So going back to this whole idea of the Miracle Academy, because it starts on January 15th. We're going to a gorgeous stunning estate in Temecula. We are going on to the sunrise hot air balloon. And yes, that shit scares me, guys. I'm scared of it. I don't like heights, but guess what? I'm doing it because I don't want scaring, scary fear, any of this stuff to keep me from doing things that are miraculous and beautiful and, and life-changing. So what kind of other ex spiritual experience can you have by going up at sunrise and looking at this planet and nature? I mean, this is it right so yes christy yes stephanie so here's the deal we're doing that and that's a silent meditation retreat there's going to be some talking at certain periods but we're going to be going in and asking the deep questions about your life asking about your purpose asking yourself to give yourself to these gifts and to this feeling and when you do you are going to most definitely feel shifts in consciousness this is just the way it works so that's retreat one weekend one and then we have all of the sessions we have private sessions we have group activations i have guests that are coming in to do womb consciousness womb work we have people i have secret surprises that i'm not even going to share it yet but i'm working on some really amazing things and at the end we go to tulum to montala which is a gorgeous stunning oceanfront resort and we're going to be circled up in ceremony and prayer and all your life's going to be different you're going to be a different woman period. There's no other way around it. Like I have so much confidence in that because that's just, it's just the way it works. So here's the deal for any of you ladies that are listening. You're like, Oh my God, if I did this for six months, my life would be totally different. I would be totally different because I would see myself differently. And when you see yourself differently, life opens up to you. So I want to invite you. I want to invite you. If you're still listening to this, to DM me, hop on a call with me. Let's talk about it. Let's figure it out. Because if this is something that's meant for you, who are you to say no? And if you say money is the reason you just made money more important than you, like that's what we do. Money is a replenishable resource. I have a private client on this thing that's listening. She doesn't even have a business. And last year we came up with money and she made thousands of dollars in like a week because an idea came through because she was open to it. And now she's like, I'm kind of bored with that. Now I want to upgrade and do something bigger. Because when you are open to your power and possibility, ideas are born out of seemingly nothing. It's called the infinite intelligence and the power of co-creation. Okay, my friends. So I got really hype on this and this was a beautiful time together that we got to share but now i have to go into the store and get these vegetables <laughs> you i was joking i told my daughter i said do you know i have not had a fresh fruit or vegetable for all of this year <laughs> but it's true because i had pizza at this place for breakfast because there was no other breakfast left we went too late and then i had coffee and then i don't even remember what i had pretzels and i'm like you know what can we get on the right start? I need some actual life force energy. I need some live living foods. So my friends, I'm sending you so much love. This is your life. This is your year. This is whatever the hell you make it because you get to choose. You get to choose. So I hope to see some of you ladies in my DMs. Let's talk about it. I have two private coaching spots available and we have seven spots left for the Miracle Academy. That's it. And then it's closing up and it's going to be full and you deserve it. You deserve it if it feels good to you but only you get to say that. And I don't care what you have to do to get it. If someone's gonna borrow you money, if you're gonna take a loan, why do we do that for university? Why do we do that for material things? But why do, as women, we don't see that that's okay to do that for our own freedom and liberation? Some people will be like, oh my God, why would you tell someone? I've done it and I would not be the woman I am today. I would not have the things in my life. I would not have the business. I wouldn't be me if I didn't do it. So who am I to tell someone else not to? Do whatever you need to do that feels good to you to get the things and to be the woman that you deserve to be, the woman that you're meant to be. All right, my friends, happy new year. Have a blessed 2020. Sending you so much love and we'll be seeing more of each other this year. Bye. Wait, how do I get off of here? <laughs>